Hi, welcome to Yoga Lounge again. We're here tonight. We're going to do some yin yoga, something to be more relaxed, something to maybe bring our energy back up because we've depleted it. I know I had a very busy weekend. Uh, hopefully this is a good class for you as well. And a uh, nice thing to do at the end of the weekend as well, to just chill down. Hi, Val. How are you? So we're doing a kind of yin treatment tonight. So we have a nice, relaxed class for you. A little longer holding of poses. We're looking to restore ourselves. So we'll come back to our mats now. If you want to get a pillow or something in the house, you can... Grab a pillow for some of the things. We're not requiring props, but pillows could be nice. You can do stuff with them. Okay, so first let's stand up. Toes, big toes together, heels slightly apart, and just come to an evenly balanced position. Mountain pose. Have your fingers facing forward, thumbs facing out. Take a few breaths there. the arms to come up on your inhale, overhead touching, and exhale back to hard, channel. Okay, let's bring your fingers down, softly separate your feet a little, and Roll your head side to side, half circle only, forward, ear, forward, ear, forward, ear, forward, ear. Leave it there. Let's extend the opposite arm, so the, way, the arm that's away from the direction of the head. We're going to extend it and reach it a little bit towards the back. You're going to feel a nice little stretch in through this side of your neck muscle. Take the fingers back a little more as you allow, explore where the, the side of your ear feels comfortable going down towards your shoulder. Good. Let's straighten it up. Take the arm up overhead. Reach it back behind you. And you're going to just tap out your, between your shoulder blades. Tap yourself right there. And then bring the arm the other arm up to the elbow and press press it back a little bit more open if you can so some of you may be over here it's going to be fine you're trying to take the arm back and touch it down behind you so it'll look it'll look like that and good as we do that let's then stretch in the direction the original direction of your head tilt Stretch the side body, still holding your arm if you can. Inhale, come up and let's release it out. Okay, good. Now we take the other arm up, bring it back, tap, tap the middle between your shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a second, I forgot to tilt your head. So come back with your arm back down, tilt your head. Opposite fingers over to the elbow. You're trying to bring that arm further back behind your head if possible. And then we're going to tip. It's a little teapot pose. Oh, I can use this in the kids' yoga class. It, to me, it looks like a little, little teapot song. We've got our elbow pointing down, leaning to the side. Inhale. Good, and release them side to side, right over your shoulders. You're looking to see if somebody came in the room, just kind of glancing over your shoulder. Good. Okay, let 
let's come down to our back. Down to our back, we're going to feel connected to the ground. So you can have your arms out to the side. Feel your full connection to the ground. Just take and roll your tailbone up. Not really coming all the way up to bridge. Just roll your tailbone up and feel your waist connect. And then we'll lower it down and feel your waist come off the ground. So you're gonna rock and roll between those positions. Inhale, waist presses down on the mat. You're lifting the tailbone. Exhale, tailbone connect, lift off with your slight bit of waistline coming off the mat. One more time, press it back. And release tailbone, inhale, and lift the waist off the ground. Okay. Good. Bring yourself back to the neutral position. We're going to do some stretching for this quad area, the psoas area. So let's bring one knee up towards. So I'm using, I'm going to start with my left leg, but on the video it's going to look like my right leg because it's a selfie camera. Bring your show, uh, knee in towards uh, your shoulder or towards your chest. Just gently, right now we still have a bent opposite knee. Good. Bring it across and over and let your fingers gently coax it to widen out. You're using your fingers on your thigh, not on your knee. Widen it out. Okay, release the fingers, take your foot off but you're going to slide it back through the space. Slide your foot back through the space. Now you're going to feel a good stretch in through the front of this left hip flexor quadricep. You're taking your right hand and grabbing or touching your left foot. So you can then, once you have your hand on the foot, if that's possible for you, you can draw the foot closer to your seat. You can draw that, that foot closer, and that's going to feel more stretch in through the front of the quad. If you feel pain in the knee, I want you definitely backing off. So you should be feeling like, in a yin class, I'm gonna say like about a 60% of your maximum uh, effort. So you're not going all out in a type A mode, but you're trying to put some effort in to feel some edge, and then you just stay in the zone with that edge. So you can't be uncomfortable. If you're uncomfortable, you're not gonna be staying in the zone for that long or be comfortable in it. So it's a toss between being slightly feeling a slight bit amount of discomfort, but being able to kind of go through that. And then you'll notice a softening. So we're staying here and talking longer because this is a pose you want to hold a little bit. If you're already feeling like this is very little now, it's not hard or it's not challenging, you can then bring the opposite knee up, take your hand to that shin, and maybe allow that knee to open away from the body. So that puts a little different emphasis on it. If you really want to take it further, remove your right hand from your foot and grab the shin with your right arm and let that uh, knee travel a little bit further to the outside. All right, let's, let's come back. Hey, that felt a little bit interesting. So come back to your neutral position. You're gonna place your other foot down. We'll start from the beginning of that pose to so bring the knee in and draw it in. I'm using behind the thigh just to protect uh, the integrity of the knee. Coming across with ankle, you can flex the foot nicely. Fingertips, middle of thigh, 
press it open. So first we're just trying to open through the hips slightly, then we'll get that deeper quad and that uh, hip flexor involvement. So when you're ready, we release the foot down, drag it underneath between the space so the foot comes well through. You want to stretch that whole hip flexor into the quad all the way to the knee, increasing we take a hold with our left hand, grab the right foot, and draw it closer to your body. That's kind of the classic quad stretch. You clasp your hand around your foot, and that's your quad stretch. It's done in many different positions. Most of the time, you'll see the athletes or people working in the gym, they just stand up against the wall and they grab their back foot. But this is a more interesting yoga style approach. Just feel into any discomfort and slowly it starts to relieve and resolve itself. That's the beauty of yin yoga. You, your pose resolves over time. like to increase, you might consider switching the handhold and taking it a little bit further to the side. Can't see, but I'm hoping you're all understanding the movement of this. Stay for another breath or two. Should be feeling a nice release in the hip flexors which are sometimes hard to get, that nice release. At the same time, the quadricep, okay, let's bring it back. Mm -hmm. Walking the feet out, just stretch them out long. You're going to take your arms overhead, climbing the rope for a moment, just stretching one arm at a time. And you can take uh, windshield wipering with your feet. Good. Okay, Supta Baddha Konasana. This is one where I told you in the beginning, if you were in a room where you could just grab a pillow, you can certainly uh, lift yourself a little higher up. So we bring the soles of the feet together, just like Baddha Konasana, but then we lie back. The pillows can be used in a couple of different locations. First of all, I'm using a bolster, but also do this with bed pillows. You can place it underneath your body and allow your pelvis to be on the down swing so you don't bring the, the uh, back of the bolster too jammed in. It's just supporting you but it's not jamming up against your pelvis so you allow that pelvis to kind of slope down. If you have a pillow or two under there it's a little softer so it might work nicely. You can also put pillows under your thighs to give you more of a supported feeling. If you have, obviously if you have blocks, you can use your blocks. The nice thing about having a fur bolster under the body is it kind of also goes with the shoulders and the shoulders just get a chance to kind of drape off the side of the, of the shape of the bolster. And you get also get this heart opening feeling across the front of the body. You can even if you're in that position, you can even open your arms out, palms facing up. length of time. 
we'll get ready to come off so we can bring your knee over and roll to one side. We're going to just remove our props, pillows, bolsters, and slide it away. Okay, next pose, let's take the legs out high. This is going to be a turning in, turning out. So you're going to take legs out wide and then move one foot back to the floor. So we'll just start with this for a moment. It's still in the hip opening range of things, but we're also going to do some turns and movements that way. So for now, let's just slide in the direction of the bent knee, reach the other arm up. And you're just leaning into it. Now, if you choose, you can lean into that knee and take it out to the side a little. So putting that extra weight there, you're giving a little more uh, weight to that stretch. Okay, let's roll back up. And now we're taking the knee in. Your knee should end up very close, you know, to the other knee now. So it, it's working that rolled in feeling. Mm -hmm. Roll out, and this time, let's take it around to a gentle, tw gentle twist, placing your left hand on the inside of thigh and turning around to the back of the room. Okay, let's come back. We'll take one more round. We allow the knee to draw in and close into that hip. And opening, coming around. Now here's what we're gonna change this into. So a soft pigeon or a pinwheel pose. So as we come around, and we are going towards a twist here, let this straight leg now bend in the same general feeling Take it and bring the knee in to the arch of the foot. So create one, this is what I call a pinwheel leg. Then we walk across in the direction of pigeon. So it's not quite a pigeon, but it's a soft pigeon. We walk up down and stretch out the body. You have the pinwheel legs going on. a difference in your hip quality from side to side. I think let's go first to the outside position. I'm not sure if we did the inside first. And we'll start slow. So just come over and knee comes in. Now knees are almost next to each other in this position. We're not turning just yet. We're starting it kind of slowly. And each time we come, we'll come a little further with it opening that leg out and now maybe rolling into that turn you can see how this could turn very easily into a pigeon so you could go from a wide angle forward bend into a pigeon come back out that's my tip for the yoga instructors that like to watch <laughs> cross your knee in and come across back over to leaning or walking yourself around, twisting, coming back, inhale, all the way around, here we go. We're going to pinwheel, soft pigeon, knee, connect, turn, and lengthen. What I like about soft pigeon is, you notice how you have your leg is more parallel and that's a position that's you know you you try to get your 
pigeon into at some point, but this is an interesting position because you're really on the side of your thigh and, and coming across and over. So it's, it's actually almost beyond pigeon in a way because you're stretching out a little bit further to the side. Whereas if you went over your knee, the direction of your knee, and then you could extend your leg back to a normal pigeon. But let's stick with this uh, softer pigeon. You kind of overshoot your direction there. Maybe getting your head down knee into arch of foot good and we'll slowly roll back up to center and let's take our forward fold so I am going to grab that bolster again and you can grab pillows again if you have in restorative poses or in type poses. Sometimes we like to have a prop there. So I'm going to use it to bring my forearms and just sort of stay with that. Toes are facing up, I'm doing regular forward fold. I'm still stretching my spine forward. And some people are very uncomfortable. I've had students in classes that if I did a kind of a gentle, cool practice like this, they were very wound up and didn't want to do it at all, saying that it didn't feel they were getting anything out of it. So the, the, the idea here is that you don't have to go to your deepest spot. You find a place, like I said, in the range, maybe 60%. You find a spot and you kind of stay with it. You investigate what happens in your mental, your, your emotional body, what's going on when you are in this, you know, place. There's a lot to be had there. You can, you know, I think the word is unpacking, right? Unpack a lot of information about yourself, how you react to things. And again, it's, it's a correction because we're always in a world that is, is looking to push us in a more active paced direction, fast paced, goal oriented. we can start to roll back up to sitting up. I should be talking. I was paddleboarding this morning, yoga paddleboard, and then I was racing sailboats this afternoon. So <laughs> it's not exactly a, uh, but this is why I need to do this today. See, I know I need to reverse all of that extra energy. All right, so we're in the uh, all fours position. We're going to allow ourselves to come down into kind of puppy pose. So I'll turn sideways because I want you to make sure you're keeping hips above knees and we come forward. Elbows can come down. Now, finally, you can straighten the arms. If you can get your head down, we'll start with that forehead connection. Keep the hips over the uh, knees, slide hands forward. Alternately, if that's definitely not working for you, elbows down and maybe just let your body go where it needs to go. Okay, so you choose. We'll stay there another few breaths. It's a little bit like a child's pose, but it really isn't because you're not letting your hip go back over your heels. Okay, 
let's bring ourselves back up and I want to allow the knees to go off the mat for a gravity assisted hip opener. I need to be very cautious and mindful of this that you don't just slide out and be, go too far. We're going to bring your hands or elbows down, maybe touch the toes together that keeps things a little more um, center there and then you can allow as is comfortable yourself to slide down into this now you do want to keep your hips knees lined up here so the opening everybody's hips can be different some people are going to be way up here and you can do a gentle um, isometric if you feel like you're going too far other people are going to be down closer to the ground with their hip so don't worry, just be where you, again, a comfortable but slightly challenging place that you can stay for a while. It starts to feel, it. oh, it's stretching just a little too much. Do that isometric where you're actually drawing the knees back towards one another and you're using the muscles that way. I will keep you here forever. Okay, let's let yourself rock forward and stretch your legs out now. Mm, good, okay, pick your feet up, moving them side to side. You can extend your arms if you like, or you can place your hands underneath your face, underneath your forehead. Okay, extend your feet straight, reaching. Let's say, okay, so we're going to slide ourselves over to the left side of your mat, going to the left side of your mat. And you're, I'm actually off my mat, that's good. Now, extend the right arm and then roll back onto your mat, leaving your knee. So you're rolling into a supine twist leaving your knee, tucking the toes, or maybe using your ankle cross, doesn't matter, however you like. But you've rolled onto your back, your shoulders are open wide, extending out, and then even roll and look over away from the knee. Good. All right, let's come back across and over. And this time now you just scoot over to the right side of your mat. And the goal here, the reason you go all the way off the mat is because when you roll back, you want to be on the mat. So we'll extend the left arm just so we can gently roll over the shoulder and then open both arms out. You tuck your toe, create supine twist. Look out to the side. Mm-hmm, very nice. Now we'll take a happy baby. Who doesn't like a happy baby, right? So bring your feet up and rock side to side. All right, happy baby with a leg extension. Happy baby, take one leg out to the side. We're still feeling this nice stretch and through the inner thigh and bring it back happy baby experimenting okay take it out to the side and the baby's like to just take it a little further all right bring it back and let's just let ourselves find the shavasana position if you have your pillows you can put them underneath your knees Make it a very comfortable resting pose. And allow yourself to sink back into the mat. Feeling very connected to your place where you are. go 
of any strivings. Also let go of any self-criticisms that might come up. Definitely don't criticize your practice. Saying, oh, I'm not flexible, or oh, I can't stand uh, holding poses a long time. Let all that go to the side. Ready, gently come to one side, press yourself. And again, at, you have a lounge class here on Sunday night. If anyone wants to stay longer in Shavasana after the class is over, just, just stay with it. That feels right for you. Gently we'll bring the palms together in front of the heart. Softly bow. Shanti. Thank you so much. I love doing these little snippets. They're so much fun. I'm glad you guys enjoy them. Namaste, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Nice to see you. Hi, Helen. Hey. Namaste. All right, I'm going to close the off. Oh, lots of people watch tonight. Wonderful. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Have a good evening. <laughs>